So today, you are gonna listen to me. Or not, it's totally up to you. What I am sick of is all these damn articles saying, oh, you shouldn't do this and you shouldn't do that. Sometimes, do you know what? You should do it because it actually means you're doing something. That didn't really make any sense. But look, here's 10 bad things you should actually be doing in the gym. Number 10, leaning on the Stairmaster. So now look, when you use the Stairmaster, should you actually be in an upright position and act like you're walking up the stairs and that you're a master? Obviously, you're like Gandalf of going up and down things. But the reason this came into my brain is because recently I've switched cardio from doing the cross trainer to the Stairmaster because my trainer, shout out Ryan, good guy, suggested that it would be better for me and he's 100% right. And look, 95% of the time, I do it in the standing up position because I want to make sure that I'm utilizing and getting the most out of the exercise. But there was somebody next to me and they were going a long ass time, man. They were doing like 45 minutes on the Stairmaster. So sometimes they'd be standing up and sometimes they would rest their arms on the arm resting devices. It's not what it's called, but you know what I'm talking about. And they would take five, six, seven minutes, whatever it may be, before they would go back into the normal position. And I saw somebody walk up to this person and go, you shouldn't be doing that. You're not doing the exercise properly. And I was like, man, in my head, because don't argue with people in the gym, you mother hubbard, because it's just the wrong kind of attitude. Now, I have no problem if it was a constructive piece of criticism, but it absolutely wasn't. But here is the brass taxes, and here are the foundations, and here is the structure. As long as you're doing the damn stair master, and as long as you're doing your cardio, and as long as you're putting yourself out there to begin with and exerting yourself, it doesn't matter. If you want to stand backwards with a cross trainer, do it. If you want to kind of like surf a treadmill, do it. If you want to take your head and smash it into the rower as you're doing the rowing thing, maybe don't do that because you're going to break the equipment, and that's not not cool, but just get your cardio done. I'm sick of all of these rules. Does it really make a massive bit of difference if you bend over a little bit on a Stairmaster? No, what are we doing here? Life is hard enough. We have enough problems. Don't all of a sudden make brand new ones up in the gym. Number nine is cheat curls, because you should do cheat curls. That's right. If you are doing 12 to 14 reps of hammer curls, let's say, should the first 12 to 14 reps be cheat curls? No, but if you get to rep number 14, you're like, wait a minute, I can probably get a little more something something out of this. Yeah, Yes. Give it a little bit of a wiggle. Give it a little bit of a raise. Give it a little bit of momentum. Make sure you're being safe. Don't put your shoulders or any part of your body under under necessary stress, because otherwise, again, you may hurt yourself. And we don't want that. But it's okay to do this every now and then. Look, you probably can't see it because of the damn camera frame. You're allowed to do a bit of swinging if it means you're going to get those final few reps out. Again, this came from an article that I saw that said, you can never do cheat curls. You can never do them. And if you think about doing them, you're a bad person. Are you flubbing? Kidding me. I mean, look, this is going to be the theme of this video. Just get your stuff done and do it as intensely as you can. And remember time and attention and remember form. These are the most important things. I just think we get bogged down with the nitty gritty. And we are going to scare and intimidate people away from the Fitness Palace of Love. Merchandise available now on Samson's <laughs> Legs. Cheap plug. I don't want to be doing that. Because ultimately, as soon as you walk into the gym and as soon as you start working out, pat yourself on the back. You're a massive success. Which kind of ties into number eight, which is well, I'm not going to do cardio because I can only do it when I'm doing weights. I will just do it anyway. Who cares? Now, there is really no right or wrong about when you do your cardio. But if you could only go to the gym once a day because you're a normal human being, it's better to do your cardio after you lifted weights if in the present moment, your major goal is to build muscle, right? You have to prioritize. Am I trying to lose fat? Am I trying to lose weight? Am I trying to put on muscle? So if you are trying to put on muscle, it stands to reason, well, I'll take the most amount of energy I have and I will dedicate it to that. But there's this weird idea that if you're doing cardio in the gym and it has to be after you've lifted weights then you can't possibly do it because all of a sudden you're going to lose all your muscle gain. Does that sound realistic to you? Let's say you've just done, I don't know, an hour and 20 minutes of push. Good for you, man. You're smashing those triceps, those chest, those shoulders. And then you go do 30 minutes on whatever piece of cardiovascular equipment you want to. Do you think after you've smashed your muscles for an hour and 20, 30 minutes on a cardio machine means all your muscles are going to run away? I'm going to leave it with you. You can do with that information, whatever you should wish. But if you think there's an element of truth to that, depending on what your diet is, of course, you're absolutely crazy. Number seven is taking a day off because you're allowed to take a day off. Please take a day off. I'm begging you. If you're trying to go to the gym and your brain is screaming at you, no, I don't want to go. I feel terrible. I feel like we trained so hard and everything hurts. We haven't slept very well. Take the damn day off. That's right. I'm talking through my teeth like Sid Justice, the master and the ruler of the world. Because I am the master. And I am the ruler!
It doesn't make you a bad person. It doesn't mean you're not doing a great job. It doesn't mean someone going to the gym is better than you. It's just the gym. And I love the gym. It's my favorite thing in the world. It's number one. It's the priority. But it doesn't have to be for you on that random Monday when all of a sudden you don't feel like going. Just make sure you go on Tuesday. Make sure you go on Wednesday. You should know what you need to get in to any given week when it comes to your fitness. It's the same when you go to work. You know when your meetings are. You know when your deadlines are. Make sure that's the same with the gym. So you're going to have a rough plan. Again, you want to get your push exercises in, your pull exercises in, your leg exercises in. Maybe you're aiming for 90 minutes of cardio a week and you can fit that in anywhere. So cool, you plan to do push on a Monday, but you don't want to go. You can do it Tuesday. Tuesdays will be there. And if Tuesday isn't going to be there because aliens blow up the world, well, you probably had a better time on that Monday by not going anyway. It's okay. It doesn't make you a bad person. Number six is eating carrot. I still cannot believe this is hanging around. This goes back to like documentaries from bodybuilders when they wouldn't eat carrots when they were preparing for a show because yes, as a vegetable, carrots have a lot of sugar in them. Well, not a lot of sugar, but for a vegetable, they have a lot of sugar. Are you competing for a professional bodybuilding show? If not, eat the damn carrot. And the reason I put this one is there, don't get too intense with it. Of course, you have to be intense. You have to be dedicated. And you have to be disciplined, but don't cross over that line. You're allowed to eat the carrot. I I promise you, if you're just trying to be in good shape and you're just trying to be healthy, that damn Bugs Bunny food group will be your friend. And number five is quitting in the middle of a workout. Now, it sounds bad, right? Why aren't you finishing that workout? Why are you leaving your training session behind? Why are you not giving the love to the fitness palace of love? The clue is in the name. Well, I'll tell you why. Because sometimes you actually need to go home. I don't mean because there's a pressing emergency. If you injure yourself in the gym or you feel something go or you tweak something, stop it. I mean it. Stop it. Go home, ice it, raise it, compress it, elevate it, do everything you can to 48 hours, 24 to 48 hours, in order to calm whatever that is down so you can then return to the gym rather than push through it, injure yourself more and be out for two weeks, four weeks, six weeks, six months. That's what everybody does, especially brand new people at the gym or noobs, as some may call them. It's really, really silly. Do not forget what your body is. Like when you get that, uh, you get the muscle pump, right? And you get all the blood rushing to your muscles. That's what you're being told. Oh my gosh, you've done this. I can't believe it. And you get lactic acid, etc. When something goes or you have an injury, the reason why you have nerves and pain cells sort of thing, is so that your brain and body can say, yeah, whatever you're doing, you should probably stop that. So listen to it. If you care about your body so much that you're happy to drive or walk, whatever it may be, to a gymnasium and put a bunch of effort in, why aren't you listening to it on the other end as well? It's just one workout. Longevity and preservation is the key. You have your entire life to work out, so make sure you're taking care of yourself. And people say, oh, it's so bad to quit your workout halfway through. No, it's not. It's it's super duper smart if you know something bad has happened. Number four is never work in calves. Just don't work calves if you don't want to work calves. Like people are going to yell at your calves anyway, because I'm pretty damn sure that calves are genetic and you just have to have, you have to be born with good calves. But this is an Instagram thing now where people go, oh, you go to the gym, but you don't work your calves. You're not a real gym goer. What does that even mean? Even if you go to the gym, you just lay on the floor and drool everywhere. You still count as a gym going because you went to the gym. Can't stand it. If you want to work your calves, work your calves. If you don't want to work your calves, don't work your calves. If somebody has massive legs, Legs, but crappy calves. Who cares? That's your biggest problem? That Brad down the road doesn't have big calves? I'm sorry, you need to get a real problem. And number three is have a bad workout. Now, of course, it sucks when you have a bad workout, but I tell you this, the law of averages and percentages tell us you're absolutely going to have a bad one eventually. And if you only have one in your entire lifetime, you should probably win a Guinness World Record. It's like everything. You have a bad day with your girlfriend, your boyfriend, you have a bad day at work, a bad day with your parents, a bad day with finances, just a bad day. And sometimes you're going to go to the gym and your training session is going to suck. This is fine. This is okay. In fact, you probably need these because maybe it reminds you or maybe it serves as the kick up your ass you have been needing. Maybe you're a little bit tired and you need more sleep. Maybe you just need to take some pre-workout for a while to get your juices stimulating. Maybe you need to change your program and change your diet in order to shock yourself into growth. But it kind of ties into what we've already said. You should still be happy with what you've achieved. You got to the gym in the first place. You dragged your bum all the way to that building and you got something done. Damn social media is ruining it for it again. Like, oh, you didn't have 100% amazing super duper workout time and therefore you dropped the ball. No, you did not. Again, the fact that you were able to get down there makes you an A-OK -okay person in my book. I mean, nobody would ever buy that book and I probably wouldn't release it to begin with. Number two 
is lifting weights for fun. This is something you see. Ties into the whole what's your excuse? Oh my gosh, I'm under so much pressure right now. I can't believe I'm... The gym is meant to be fun. We go to the gym because it's enjoyable. The byproduct is the health and fitness stuff and protecting our heart and whatever else that we are doing. But it's, it's not, I would not accept anyone calling that a negative thing to enjoy it. So many people want to make it a hardship and so many people want to make it a stress and so many people want it to be like, oh, you won't believe what I did today. Do it for yourself. You're only in competition with yourself. Why would you want to add worse things to your... Do you know how hard life is? I keep cutting myself off in the middle of a sentence. It's really hard. And you're spending a lot of time at work and you're spending a lot of time with your family and your friends, right? We hope that's what you want to do. But we only have a limited amount of that damn thing. So when you go to the gym, make sure you're doing something that you love and make sure you're doing something that you enjoy. If anybody tells you, oh man, you don't look like, you know, you're, you're pushing it too intensely. Again, you have to be intentional. You know I'm saying it. But if anyone kind of makes out that you're having too much fun, which does happen, I don't mean shouting in the gym with your friends. Don't do that. That's annoying. You just got to push that to one side. Go there and enjoy it as much as you possibly can. Number one is lunges. That's a weird thing to throw in there, but again, what's the title? 10 bad things you should do in the gym. Do you know how bad lunges are? They suck, they hurt so damn much they make me want to cry. And sometimes I do terrible things in the middle of a lunge. My body is just screaming at me. I'll do anything right now if you stop. So yeah, they may be the baddest of all the bad things, but should you do them in the gym? Absolutely. Because very depressingly, as soon as I started doing lunges, what happened to my damn legs? They flipping grew. Now again, there's a comment section down there. Make sure you drop your own experiences of these. And please do remember that the gym is meant to be a positive thing in your life. So approach it thusly. Also, patreon.com forward slash Simon316. GorillaMind.com forward slash Simon. You just go to Simon to get 10% off. There's links down there. You absolutely want to get on their energy drinks. I've tried these now. I'm going to put a taste video out soon. Believe me, don't believe me. That's fine. The best energy drink ever. You get an energy boost, you get an atropic boost, you get a serotonin boost, you get uh, uh, a dopamine boost. They are wonderful. And Derek from More Plates, More Dates is basically some kind of scientist now. So again, if you are planning to buy them and try them, please do use my code. I get a little bit of money, but I'm so happy to pimp Gorilla Mine because they never let me down. And these are the kind of things that I did want to be involved in. I can also do you a personalized Cameo video message on Cameo. Search for my name at Simon316 on Instagram and Twitter. I have merchandise, pro wrestling tees and Samson Athletics. There's links everywhere. Please do give them a click. And I do believe that's everything, but I kind of feel like I've ranted and raved enough. So, again, as I always say, enjoy the damn gym. You may as well. Why, why do you want more hardship in your life? You don't. So skip in there with a big old smile on your face and your favorite music in your ears. I'll see you soon.